Good afternoon. I'm very happy to have a chance to talk with you today. And I want to talk a little bit about excitement at Saint of X. And just because my students have had a little trouble with my spelling of excitement, I'll explain it to you. X is for Saint of X, and SCI is for science. Because in the summer, the undergrads working with me have carefully collect, corrected my spelling for me. So this is my um, dream to excite everyone about chemistry and science. And I'm going to tell you today about our program where we go out into the rural areas of Nova Scotia and we visit as many school children as we can and Aboriginal communities and we invite as many as we can into our university and we try and show them our uh, passion for science and engage them as much as we can in hands-on um, activities and I'm going to ask you to join in with me today so I can show you how we like doing that. CineVex has a culture of outreach to both local communities in all different kinds of ways and also to the global community. So our science outreach fits in with this um, culture at CineVex. And the undergraduates have an amazing experience being able to join in this outreach in many different kinds of ways. And some of them work with me in my outreach, and they often have great experience before they come to me in many of these other projects. In the beginning, over 30 years ago, I started teaching at of X in the chemistry department. And I met Dr. David Bunbury there. And he was renowned for his passion for life and for people and for science. And he shared that passion with a lot of young people and with myself. And I went out to many schools with him and we had fun. And I saw the joy on his face as he talked about science and the joy on the children's face as we communicated with them. And any time around the chemistry building when you saw David, David would say, come, come, I've just found this neat thing I'm going to show you. Everyone come here. I've got this and I'm going to show it to you. And we all joined in and he was so excited. And so I think the most important thing when we try and share something, uh, no matter what we're teaching, is to show our passion and our excitement and to share that with everybody. So we have continued this uh, today and we have expanded the program and now not only do young people in our uh, community benefit from it but our undergraduates are a great, um, have a great deal to do with it and benefit greatly from it because they participate in the teaching of this program and they learn a lot from that. So there's many layers to our teaching that's involved in the outreach. So I'm going to show you, uh, I, I can't talk as eloquently as some of our previous speakers, but I can show you a little of what we do when we go to a school. So show and tell. So I go out to a school and I have to show I'm a scientist. So I have to put on my lab coat and I advertise where I'm from. And <laughs> I have to show even better than that, that I'm a scientist and also I'm safe so I need my safety glasses. <laughs> and then I'm going to engage with the audience. So we talk to them and we ask them what they think and participate. And I say, I'm going to show you something about lycopodium powder. Lycopodium powder comes from spore, or as a powder that is the spores of a moss, very dry, very finely divided, and I'll say, what do you think this is gonna do? Now I could equally well hold up a beaker of ice and say, what do you think it's gonna do? And I'm going to get the same answer because I'm a chemist. And the children say, it's going to explode. It's going to burn up. It's going to go boom. <laughs> Doesn't matter what I ask. So, but we have to do that to show, you know, we can do that. So I'm going to take a little bit of the dried moss. And I'm going to put it down this funnel. Now, nothing always works quite like we want it to in science. So they're called experiments because 
Sometimes they do what we want, and sometimes not. So, lights. See, it didn't do what I wanted. <laughs> Did this morning when we practiced. So, this is, this is a great lesson in science. We do research, and we plan things, and we postulate that things happen. And when we go to the schools, the children are equally delighted when something goes wrong as when it doesn't work, or as when it does work. So I'm not measuring this time. Maybe that'll be better. <laughs> but I'm determined we're going to make this happen. OK. So now I've shown you I'm a chemist, but how are we going to, um, <laughs> second try, how am I going to make this connect with everyday things? This is fun seeing blowing up. So what can I tell you about that? Uh, finely divided matter, very, very explosive. So first of all, surface area. Candy. Everyone will have sucked a candy. A candy dissolves slowly as you suck it. What do you do to make it dissolve quicker? Crunch, 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 crunch. Little pieces, big surface area, dissolves reaction fast. Same idea, grain silos. Every now and then you hear about one blowing up, it's the same idea as what I blew through the flame there. Finely divided matter and it catches fire very, very fast. So when we do something catchy like this, we can talk about all sorts of things and engage the children in things that they see happening that they might have heard of, chewing candies or grain silos, whichever kind of age group they might be in. So this is a little bit of fun, but we're also learning. So we have expanded our program. I have uh, 10 undergraduates that I pay in the summer to help with this program. I have a lot more undergraduates that volunteer. They really buy into the program. So I have volunteers during term time, um, in the evenings, during March break, and they all help do this. So we want to encourage scientific curiosity. We want to show the children how much we enjoy chemistry, and the undergraduates are much closer in age to them. So they see them as big brothers or sisters having a great time being passionate about something and hopefully encouraging them along. And it's particularly important in our area where we are very rural. And a lot of the children are, uh, we're in Anaganish. We are two hours away from a city center. Some of the children we visit are another hour and a half away from that. So it's very difficult for them to get anywhere big and see much science. And there's not many visitors to their schools. So this is an important thing for them to see. So I said engage them. We want to engage in science. It's all right looking at me do this. You can watch that on YouTube, everything blowing up, carrying on. I think it's important that the children are engaged, that you do things. Now, I was going to get you to do this in the audience, but I've resisted because it's a little messy. But it's a very simple, and this is what we like. Take some activities that are very simple. So I have ice cubes, and I'm going to put them out, and we're going to watch them melt. So this is something you can do at home, you can do any time. No problem. So what's so exciting about it? So we'll see, we'll see what happens. It's one of my favorites. So I've got an aluminum block there and ice cubes on it. And I've got a wooden block there, ice cubes on it. Can you see those? And I've done just sitting there. Nothing much is happening. So, well, what happened to the ones on the aluminum block? Well, I can't pick them up anymore because they've melted. So they're gone. I'm making a big, big mess, but I don't have to clean it up. So, so look how fast they're dissolving. Melting, not dissolving, melting, disappearing there. So that's one of our favorite demonstrations. Simple, you can all go home and do that with your children. You can, the children that we show it to can take it home and discuss it with their parents and they love doing that, to be able to pass this on and show what they've learned. So why does that happen? 
That's the next thing. It's no good saying, oh, it happened. It was exciting, but why? So metal conducts heat really, really well. Wood doesn't. What can we use that for in everyday life? Well, we can put our popsicle down on the wood and it won't melt. Or you can go home and take that steak out of the freezer and put it on a big chunk of metal. You don't have to buy that one for 19.95 that they sell on TV. Just take any metal pan, put it on it, and same thing will happen there. So lots of easy things that we can use to talk about science. So when we go out to a school visit, we contact schools um, April or so, I hire the, the undergraduates in, for May, June, July, August, and in April I set up school visits, and in May the undergraduates start working, and they train, and so they go out to the classes, and they set up there, and we cycle as many children through as we can in each visit, and we focus on hands-on activities like the ice melting as much as possible. If we can, we bring them into campus because then they can do the same thing in a lab, which is an even more exciting setting. And it um, gives them the idea that university is a familiar place, that it's not a scary place to come, that it's not somewhere up there, it's just us people that they find when they get there. Um, for the school visits, I have a set of topics, I have kits, I have background material. The students uh, that we hire, actually don't know a lot of the material that we take out to the schools. They follow a very rigid science curriculum. And all these fun little things and ideas are not always taught as part of the program. So it's outreach to the undergraduates as much as it, as much as it is outreach to the students in the area. And we talk through water and forestry and bones and engineering. And these are grade levels going through here, so primary up to grade nines, tens, elevens, twelves. And we make sure there is lots of hands-on experience there. We try and avoid repetition a lot of the time. So we take ice again to the same class, or so I do it again for you in a few minutes' time, and you go, oh, I know what's going to happen. I saw that, we know that, but I take another experiment and it's slime. And I'm gonna get the audience to participate here. So I have some uh, cups made up here. And for those of you who are willing, you get a styrofoam cup with a stir stick in it and a little shot glass. And we're gonna do this together. And the reason we're gonna do slime is, if I take the slime into the school and say, we're gonna make slime, they go, yes. They don't say all oh, that again. Slime is, tells us about polymers. And I start off with polyvinyl alcohol. And I'm going to do it up here as you do it. I'm going to do it in a see-through glass so you can see what I'm doing. Little polyvinyl alcohol here. And we stir it around. And you can see it's a little bit thicker than normal because it's a polymer. It's not just water. And then in your uh, shot glass here, we have a little bit of borax. You may be familiar with borax, and I can't do everything at once. So while you are stirring this, you need to be pouring that in there. But we can kind of do it like that. And we'll stir it around madly here. And we have what's really important these days, instant gratification. So <laughs> there we do. We have slime on a stick. Now, that's not the end of it there. We're going to reach in and you're gonna put it, your hands in there, and you're gonna roll it, I have paper towels up the front, and you're gonna roll it round, and then you're gonna stretch it out, and the more you work with that, this, this can take hours to play with. You're gonna stretch it out into something wonderful, but I wanna say some other things before I do that there. So, we started with the long polymer there. I may have it over everything, that's what lab coats are for. We've cross-linked it, we've made it into a gel, you can play with it. This is how many, many polymers are made that we use everywhere. So this is how we have fun out at the schools. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the schools we visit. So we visit uh, 40 different schools every year, at least in Nova Scotia. We are in Anaganish, and we spread out around that. And we visit over 5,000 school children every year. 
And we have another four or 500 into camps at the university or we go and visit them. Uh, for the camps, we have about 25 students a camp. We try and keep it as cheap as possible. So we have $75 a camp as our fee, which kind of sounds a lot, but it's cheaper than a ton of camps that are around. We usually have about four leaders at each camp. Um, we try and do science stuff all day, science games while we're at lunch, science movies. And we have faculty mentors for the program so that the leaders are continually being involved and talked about science so they have a really good background to discuss with the students. One of the most important features of the program are the undergraduate leaders. They learn a lot from that program. They hone their communication skills. They learn organizational skills. They increase their knowledge of science and they see how to apply, uh, to apply it to everyday things. They see how much they love teaching and communicating science to the children and they see a response in the children that they get really, really excited about. So my theme is always in these visits, chemistry is fascinating, science is fascinating. We may say sometimes just science is fun, um, depending who we're talking to. What's important with the leaders and how I choose who's gonna be a leader is how enthusiastic they are, how much they care, how passionate they are. And the great leaders that I have are those leaders that really care and that take ownership of the program. Thank you for listening today, and remember, science is fun. <laughs>